Hello Air Science, let's see what the upcoming weekend has in store for you. And it could be about pretty much anything, love, finances, friendship, trips, um, whatever comes up. We'll have four separate spreads in this reading. The first spread is for all of you, it's like a bonus, and then there's going to be a separate spread for every air sign individually. Timestamps should be in the description box down below. Please sh like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is uh, for all air signs. We have uh, the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Knight of Wands. Then we have uh, the Hierophant, clarified by the Seven of Wands. We also have the Two of Swords, clarified by the Four of Cups. And uh, we have the Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with um, maybe a Fire Sign, there is Leo Sagittarius. We also have Taurus. But you could be dealing with pretty much any Zodiac sign. You know, it's one of those spreads, uh, air signs, when one of the cards is a questionable card, right? The Two of Swords, that was the last card that came out, the third card, and uh, that card could be interpreted a couple of different ways, right? So it's one of those times when you, when it kind of looks okay, when it kind of looks good, but when you start clarifying, you actually start seeing the, the real picture, what's actually going on, right? So the Two of Swords, <laughs> this card could be interpreted as a card of a crossroads, it could be interpreted as a card of an armistice or a ceasefire, Right? But at the same time, it could be a card of somebody who is closed off, somebody who says, no, no way, Jose. Right? And I think that's exactly what it is in this case. With the Two of Swords, uh, the person on the receiving end of this offer, and we'll get to this offer in just a second, the, this person says no. Because the Four of Cups clarifying it is definitely a rejection card. Definitely. All right. So what's actually going on, you have somebody coming back from the past. And uh, this person could be a player, okay, could be a player, could be somebody who is hot and cold in and out of your life, and uh, if you can think of someone like that, this is the person coming back. Well, I'm not surprised. We have Mercury retrograde in full force, raging across the planet, <laughs> across, the, across the solar system, right? But uh, yeah, that's probably why this person is back, I don't know. The Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck is a card of somebody from the past. It's also a soulmate card, but it is somebody from the past. The Ace of Swords, clarified by the Knight of Wands, the first two cards. Um, the Knight of Wands is the person coming back and or and uh, their intention. It's, um, you know, the most inconsistent knight out of all the knights. And uh, as I was just mentioning, this is the energy of uh, somebody who is hot and cold, a player, you know, that type of a person. They're coming in with an Ace of Swords. Okay, the Ace of Swords, um, you know, they're going to be very straightforward about something. They're straight, very straightforward about something. They may even offer you uh, something serious, something like a commitment, because the Hierophant the next card over could be a Taurus. You're dealing, but it is a card of uh, something traditional, like a committed relationship or marriage, or perhaps they want to go somewhere with you to some kind of an official or formal event or something like that. And uh, like I said, you are not you are not entertaining it. All right. With the remaining two cards, you're definitely shutting this person down because you know what this person is all about. They may say one thing today, but then they'll change their mind tomorrow, and therefore you're rejecting them. All right. Cool. Gemini. Uh, we have the Emperor, clarified by the Page of Cups. We have Death. Clarified by Judgment, we have the Star, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, and we also have the Sun on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Aries, Scorpio, Aquarius, a Leo, maybe a Sagittarius. <laughs> you know what? We have, what, seven cards on the table? Yeah, I think I count seven. Six of them are major arcana cards. Alright, six out of seven cards. The only minor arcana card on the table is that Page of Cups, clarifying the Emperor. All right, so we could be actually looking at multiple events because uh, we have what two or three days in a weekend, two days, and uh, it could be multiple events. So keep that in mind. Uh, but I'll just focus on uh, one scenario, not to make it too complex, too complicated for you. All right, um, you could still be dealing. I think you're still dealing with multiple people, though. Multiple people. So you got the emperor clarified by the page of cups. Uh, the emperor is an Aries. Uh, major arcana card, we're right in the middle of an Aries birthday season. So either you're gonna wish somebody a happy birthday and uh, they may invite you to come to their birthday party or something like that, or perhaps you are already going to an Aries birthday party. 
with the Page of Cups and the, the Emperor. And uh, that's where something interesting is going to happen when you do attend that birthday party. Because we have Death clarified by Judgment. You know, Death could be a Scorpio you're dealing with, but um, uh, perhaps this Emperor is somebody from your past, or if you do go to that birthday party, you may run into somebody from your past at that birthday party. All right? Because uh, judgment is a card of somebody coming back from the past. Judgment is also a card having to make a judgment call. And death is either a Scorpio you're dealing with, but death is a card of an ending or it's a card of a transformation. So together, um, perhaps this is somebody coming back from the past. Somebody you haven't seen in a long time. You know, and uh, whatever the two of you had going in the past, it ended in the past. And now it's the universe is trying to resurrect it. Or maybe one of you will try to resurrect it. Right? And I think it's going to be fairly successful. Because then we have the star, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, and we have the sun on the bottom of the deck. The star could be an Aquarius. You're dealing with the star is a card of healing. Healing. <laughs> it's also a card of a wish come true. The Wheel of Fortune, in this case, is a restart of a cycle, a repeat of a cycle. So healing and a repeat of a cycle, yes. It looks like you, you guys will have another go at this. And uh, the sun on the bottom of the deck could be a Leo you're dealing with, but the sun is a card of clarity and it's the happiest card in the deck. Alright, so you are either getting back together with the birthday boy or the birthday girl, or somebody else at that party. You're gonna run into some, or per, well perhaps you know this, this ex of yours is going there. All right, then it looks like a reconciliation. <laughs> All right, cool. Libra, we have uh, the Five of Wands, clarified by the Knight of Cups. We have the King of Pentacles, clarified by the Eight of Wands. Then we have the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Page of Wands. And we have the Magician on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We also have Water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Um, and uh, we have a Gemini. So you've got this King of Pentacles, Libra, who is in love with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think this is somebody new unless you meet this person early in the week. Uh, but by the weekend, this person will be firmly in love with you, if I can use the word firmly within love. <laughs> but they're struggling with it, right? There's, they're going to be struggling with it or have been struggling with it. But um, during this weekend, you'll be hearing from them. They're going to ask you out, and uh, when the two of you do go out, if you decide to go out with them, they're going to spill some beans, <laughs> right? So yeah, the King of Pentacles is the person you're dealing with, or will be dealing with. It could be an Earth sign towards Virgo Capricorn, or somebody with a lot of Earth in their chart. They're clarified by the Eight of Wands. This person could be at a distance from you, so it's not going to be a problem, because they're going to show up. They're going to travel, right? Um, but the Eight of Wands is also a card of communication. And uh, my favorite interpretation of the Eight of Wands is the Cupid's Arrow. So yes, this person is going to be falling <laughs> victim to another um, arrows of love by that Cupid, right? And uh, that uh, the Knight of Cups to the left, clarifying the Five of Wands is is kind of confirmation of what I just said. Because the Knight of Cups is the most romantic, the most loving knight out of all four knights. It's clarifying the Five of Wands, which is a card of a struggle, but I think it's this person's internal struggle, right? Um, we also have the Magician on the bottom of the deck. It's a card of manifestation, and most importantly, it's a card of taking action. Speaking of action, the last two cards, the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Page of Wands, definitely taking action. Right, both are action-oriented cards. With the Ace of Swords, people are usually very honest, very straightforward. They're, the Ace of Swords is a no BS card. And uh, the Page of Wands clarifying it, this is them simply reaching out to you and uh, asking you out on a date. Or if both of you are going to the same event, they're going to approach you at that event and uh, start, start flirting with you, start cracking jokes. But with the Ace of Swords, I think at some point the truth is going to come out about how they feel. And then you can decide what you want to do about this Libra. <laughs> All right? Cool. Aquarius. We have the Eight of Wands, the Four of Swords, Temperance, and the Nine of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius. Um, so here's the deal, Aquarius. I think over the weekend you'll be either spending time by yourself because you want, you want to be left alone. You could be feeling a little bit under the weather 
for some of you, okay? Um, you could be spending time with somebody else, but it's just going to be the two of you, all right? Some of you could be literally traveling to some kind of a healing destination, you know, like a, a retreat, or maybe you're going to rent out um, a small cabin somewhere in the woods, right? So, or uh, perhaps you had a crazy week before this weekend, you were all over the place, maybe you had to travel, you had, you, you know, you're completely depleted of your energy and you just need some time to recuperate. Because I do see you recuperating over the weekend. Not because something is wrong, but because you're just tired. That's how it feels. Or maybe you're a little bit under the weather. Okay? Because we have the, those Four of Swords and Temperance. Both of them could be interpreted as cards of healing. But not necessarily because you're feeling sick, but because you just needed some time off, you needed to unplug, or maybe you're literally going to some kind of a retreat, like I said, or a spa, and getting those procedures done, so you just want to be left alone. <laughs> right? The nine of ones on the bottom of the deck, it's one of those cards that could be interpreted as leave me alone. Right? Uh, I'm tired. The eight of ones, the first card that came out, is actually one of the fastest cards in the deck. So for some of you, it could be a card of travel. So like I said, some of you could be literally traveling to one of those leave me alone destinations where nobody can find you. <laughs> or a, some kind of a retreat. Or maybe you're staying home. Because the eight of ones, maybe this is what was happening during the week. It was like chaotic week. You had a lot of things going. You were traveling. You were, you were all over the place. And over the weekend, you just need time to recharge. Something among those lines, Aquarius. All right? Cool.